G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today we're gonna to take about marriage and what it's really like for a lot of men. The video I'm gonna be playing um, as a discussion point is a video called The Joys of Marriage. Um, it's by a YouTuber called Independent Man. I'll put a link to this whole video in the description, so go check him out, like, comment, sub, um, and show him um, some appreciation for his great content. Let's get started. Came home last night after working 15 hours, 9am to midnight. Climb into bed. About three minutes later, the first thing she says, Are you mad at me? I ask her, Is it too much to expect to ask me how my day was and whether I'm doing alright after working for 15 hours? I got yelled at for the next 45 minutes. I love marriage. They don't operate that way and they don't particularly uh, give a shit. So what I always talk about in my videos, because I've experienced this firsthand as well, guys, women, they don't want to know if you've had a stressful time. They don't want to feel like the head of the household is under stress, is not able to keep things together. It's just the way they're programmed. So once you start talking like that, they don't want to know about it. As much as they ask you um, to divulge information, to share how you're feeling, they'll try tooth and nail to get you to do it. I've fallen for it in the past. As soon as you start talking, the eyes just glaze over. They don't want to know about it. They just nod and go, oh, yeah. And you can tell the attraction just goes down. I just broke up with my fiance. I took her out and said I felt we should put our wedding plans on hold. She went crazy on me. I ended up breaking it off with her completely. Mine made the mistake of entering wife mode before she was my wife. I have a house and a trust fund and could not risk marrying someone who showed signs of being a wife as described by this thread. Three days now and she's spamming my phone ten times a day, alternating between rage and repentance. So file that one under dodge a bullet. I make it. That's that's good. Good to see a man dodge a bullet because many of us don't. We uh, we cop the bullet. It work, but only within the context of the shittiest existence I can imagine in terms of what I expected in marriage versus what I got. What I expected: laughter, doing everything together, from boring bill paying to swing dance lessons to movies on the couch to Sunday morning papers to buying tampons to medical problems when they arose to whispered sweet nothings to deciding on a new sink for the kitchen. To great sex for life, growing old together, dying while looking into her eyes. Oh, come on, what man. I got, a woman who after marriage instantly turned into a shrewish, whining, nagging, sexless, frigid, materialistic, petty, manipulative bitch who only cares about how much money I make, constantly upgrading her fucking wedding diamond, it's now 3.67 carats, and spending my cash on clothes from... Neiman Marcus, I guess that is, goddamn fucking window treatments from some specialty shop, and endless fucking shit from Pottery Barn that has nothing to do with my life or our life. Biggest mistake? Should have spent more than four years getting to know her. Should have not let the great sex cloud my mind. God damn it all to hell. The thing is there, and I experienced a very similar thing, although there are long signs along the way, guys. A lot of the time, um, there are behaviours that they exhibit and you go, ooh, I didn't quite like that. But you put your head in the sand thinking, oh, she's just having a bad day or she's stressed or whatever. You need to take note of those um, bad behaviours. I'm not just talking about someone being cranky. We all have bad days, don't we? But uh, being being nasty, saying things that can cut you deep. A lot of women, um, if even if you're having a minor argument, will go straight for the jugular. They'll say nasty things about you. Uh, maybe your mum, maybe your dad. They'll get you where it hurts. If a woman's doing that, that is not wife material. They're going to ruin your life, even if they're angry. If someone's going to rise to anger like that, they're going to make your life a living hell, and there's no escape for you should you sign that contract. Uh, the only escape is through a very painful, uh, life-destroying divorce process. When I say life-destroying, I'm not talking about myself. I recovered after about four or five years. A lot of men don't, and that's when I talk about life-destroying. I was lucky because I didn't have children. But he said that she turned into all these things. No, she didn't turn into those things. She was those things the whole time. She was the shrewish person who didn't even really care about sex that much and just wanted money. That's, that's what she was. She was just doing the sales pitch. I talk about it in plenty of my other videos, guys. Women are the best actors. They're auditioning for a role. They just want to be married. They want to be show to their girlfriends that they've got a ring. They want to show to the society, her work colleagues. They want to talk about their husband. Um, you know, in drop name drop, I've got a husband in conversation. Show their ring. All that sort of bullshit. It isn't so much having the man. It's having the title of being a wife. Someone has given them social validation or valued them enough to put a ring on their finger. That's what they want. A lot of the time, they're not going to act like the wife that we think we're going to get. 
Um, it's a tale as old as time. Pretty bleak, I know, but true. My wife changed almost the day after the wedding ceremony. She began behaving as if she was a child at home with me paying all the bills and her not contributing a penny. And she did nothing but go out drinking with her friends and sleep all day. Any time I questioned her, she had a teenage oh. fit. She was 30, exactly like a daughter arguing with her father. I think basically she didn't want to be an adult, and as soon as she thought I was stuck to her as her father had been, she went immediately back to behaving like the stroppy teenager she really wanted to be with no responsibilities. And the amazing thing was how she had behaved like an adult woman in the six years we'd been together before the marriage. We're in the middle of a divorce right now, and she doesn't believe it's actually happening, and calls me saying the room she's staying in is so awful and the people are so terrible, exactly like a student calling her dad with a sob story, trying to get him to send a check. She's in for a shock when the divorce is final and I stop being polite and pretending the divorce is just some paperwork we need to do as a family and she realises she's on her own and that I'm no longer going to fix things she's fucked up or pay her bills. Well, buddy, uh, isn't, you're in for a shock too because you might not have gone through your financial settlement yet, but you're going to cop an absolute graping. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, how could he not have seen it in the six years prior? And same with the story before this one, where he lamented four years being not enough time to get to know her. Surely there would have been a tell. It's difficult to believe that you wouldn't have seen some red flags, or at least some orange ones along the way. I know from my own experience, early in a relationship, every now and then you get a glimpse, a sign of something you don't yeah. like in the other person. But because everything else is great, you start to rationalise. You tell yourself things like, well... Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. Everybody has flaws, which is all true. But the important point about flaws is it depends what those flaws are. There's a difference between not liking the way someone chews their food and, say, an inability to take responsibility for one's actions. You might be annoyed that your girlfriend is emotionally invested in watching reality TV to the point that she frequently sheds tears. But can she have a rational conversation when you have a disagreement without resorting to tears? The latter being far more important for fostering a healthy relationship. I couldn't say any better myself. Good old independent man. That was very well said, mate. I've been married for 10 years and it sucks. A lot. I love my kids, but my wife is a control freak and a bitch, and her main mission in life seems to be to grind me down into some sort of Stepford hub. As an example, I went to pick up my daughter at a birthday party over the weekend. For once, the people throwing the party didn't have a lot of money, and it was a smallish sort of cheap house with a few kids in the backyard swimming in an above-ground pool, which was deep enough for them to swim, but not so deep they could get into any trouble. For once, the party wasn't some frantic uber mummy running around trying to outdo her friends. My daughter had spent two or three hours swimming in the pool and had a blast. So when I got home, I told my wife that it was a great party, the best I'd ever seen. And she got all pissed because I apparently had implied that the party she was going to throw in a week for my daughter wouldn't be as good. And wasn't that insensitive of me? And so on. I wish I had not married her, except for the kids. The thing I learned is that power is a really important thing in marriage. Once they realise you have the power, women are far, far nicer to you. It's fucked up, but they are. As for those who are considering marriage, do it if you want kids, but remain in control and don't let her even think about trying to change you. Yeah, remain in control. Hold that masculine frame, boys. Good luck with that. Um, good luck with that when, uh, say, you marry a woman who doesn't have anything to her name or might have dead or doesn't have the assets or uh, income that you might have. Yeah, hold your masculine frame. She's going to take you straight down to divorce court if she doesn't get what she wants. And you're going to pay for that in a very big way. So, yeah, remain in control. Very easy to say. If a woman uh, is not getting what she wants, she switch, switches off on you, loses respect for you, mate, you're at the mercy of the system. I can tell you that from experience. Never thought it would happen to me. It did. I've seen it happen to friends. I've seen it happen to other guys. A lot of men have written into me and told me their stories. It happens. So what I say to get married, ooh, it's a big risk. It's a really big risk. I never tell people not to do something, but know what the hell you're getting into and what the back end of that looks like uh, if things do not go your way. Be educated. I never quite figured out why the sexual urge of men and women differ so much. And I never figured out the whole Venus and Mars thing. I've never figured out why men think with their head and women with their heart. I've never figured out why the sexual desire gene gets thrown into a state of turmoil when it hears the words, I do. 
I'll tell you why it does. I'm going to interrupt this one. I'll tell you exactly why it does, because uh, a woman that does that had never had any real interest in you in the first place, and she was giving that to you because she knew that was a sales pitch that men are going to go for. If she's not having sex with you, um, and not putting out and not being filthy and keeping you on the hook with all the mind clouding, mind numbing, cock numbing, uh, blowjobs and anal and all that sort of shit that happens, guys. You wouldn't throw rocks at them, let alone buy them a wedding ring um, and sign up to a horrible, horrible deal. Here's an example of what I mean. One evening last week, my wife and I were getting into bed. Well, the passion starts to heat up and eventually she says, I don't feel like it. I just want you to hold me. I said, what? What was that? So she says the words that every husband on the planet dreads hearing. You're just not in touch with my emotional needs as a woman. Enough for me to satisfy your Uh. physical needs as a man. She then responded to my puzzled look by saying, can't you just love me for who I am and not what I do for you in the bedroom? Realising that nothing was going to happen that night, I went to sleep. The next day, I opted to take the day off from work to spend time with her. We went out to a nice lunch and then went shopping at a big, unnamed department store. I walked around with her while she tried on several different, very expensive outfits. She couldn't decide which one to... So he's trying to buy love. As I said, guys, you cannot buy the love of a woman. Uh, It's like guys who get frustrated in the dating process because they're investing all this money. They're taking them out on first dates. The guys who... Don't know this stuff, and they go on first dates and meet girls down the pub, or, or take them out to the restaurants and drop you know 150, 200 bucks on a first date, and the girl doesn't call them back, and they get annoyed. If a girl doesn't like you, you can spend five thousand dollars on her for dinner. You're not going to get anything out of it. It's not going to change their mind. Same as this guy. If a woman's done with you and you're married to her, going and buying her shit's not going to make her want to fuck you take so I told her we'll just buy them all she wanted new shoes to complement her new clothes so I said let's get a pair for each outfit <laughs> we went on to the jewelry department where she picked out a pair of diamond earrings let me tell you she was so excited she must have thought I was one wave short of a shipwreck I started to think she was testing me because she asked for a tennis bracelet when she doesn't even know how to play tennis I think I threw her for a loop when I said that's fine honey smiling with excited anticipation she finally said I think this is all dear Let's go to the cashier. I could hardly contain myself when I blurted out, No, honey, I don't feel like it. Her face just went completely blank. Oh, okay, okay. I judged him too early. I jumped on him. What a bloody legend. Whether this is true or not, or if it's a joke, I love that. Jaw dropped with a baffled, What? I then said, Really, honey, I just want you to hold this stuff for a while. You're just not in touch with my financial needs as a man, enough for me to satisfy (laughs) your shopping needs as a woman. And just when she had this look like she was going to kill me, I added, why can't you just love me for who I am and not for the things I buy for you? Apparently, I'm not having sex tonight either, but at least that bitch knows I'm smarter than her. Bloody now, I'm fairly certain that was a fantasy story, but if I told you that before I started reading it, then it wouldn't have had the same effect. Classic. All right, halfway through the video, guys, aiming for 10K subs, so join the channel, be a part of the growth journey, um, and watch my videos through the end. That's the best way to get me out there to a wider audience. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's continue to the back end of the show. I was driving back from a meeting this morning, thinking about my wife, and I really wanted to go home and simply beat the living shit out of her. Okay. I've been supporting everyone for years, working my ass off, and my wife has not done one single fucking thing to make my life easier, to encourage me, or to help me with anything that's bugging me. She's on the PTA, the board of her preschool. She teaches art at the elementary school, is involved in a book club, and on and on and on. Her calendar is ridiculous. But I'm some kind of fucking afterthought. I'm the engine that powers this entire thing and I haven't gotten laid in months. She takes care of the children during the week, fine, but we have a housekeeper because actually cleaning the fucking house is beneath her. We take shirts to the dry cleaner because she couldn't possibly iron them. Clean laundry is in piles in the garage because she can't be expected to fold it. On weekends, I'm apparently her assistant. I can't wait for Sunday night to come when I can get out and head back to the office. And every day there's some new example of truly shitty behavior. A bad attitude for any human. For example- Wow, that's incredible, that's incredible. But a lot of guys enjoy this sort of thing. I personally didn't have it this bad. Um, I did. Uh, I was married to someone who um, was quite neat and tidy and would do housework. Admittedly, not all of it, but would help. So I don't know what that's like. But uh, my friend Larry, um, he's um, nice. Uh, so the woman he was married to was an Italian woman. They're supposed to be very uh, homely, uh, motherly, uh, nurturing, um, keep a, you know manage a tight ship. 
Not the new age ones anymore, guys. She was horrible. The house would bloody have dog shit on the carpet and piss on the floor and all that sort of thing because he'd be at work all day and the dogs would be inside. You know, she wouldn't clean the house at all. Um, there would be scum and shit in the shower. And Larry probably wasn't the cleanest bloke either, right? And he's a dude and he's just like not as anal. But for me to go over there and have a look at that house, it was like um, almost like a derelict. Um, I had a go, not a go at him, but I said, hey, mate, this is your house. Like, why are you letting it run into just such disrepair? He goes, I'm just used to it. She doesn't do anything around the house. I'm too busy. He, he, he was working um, two jobs at the time. So he was working a full-time corporate job. And then to also help pay down the mortgage um, more because she didn't work. She worked, so she stayed at home all day, did nothing, guys, mind you. Let the dogs piss and shit everywhere and not pick it up. He was um, driving a truck on weekends, um, delivering like a nursery, you know, uh, truckloads of rocks, you know, for people doing landscape gardening, stuff like that. So he was working like seven days a week, sometimes six days a week. He was lucky to get one day off where he'll do chores um, on that day. So the house ran into disrepair, but he accepted it. He would go home and self medicate by drinking beers. What did he get out of that arrangement? He got divorce scraped, um, as I've told you guys many times, and he lost like 70% of every uh, of his assets. Uh, the house that he had actually paid off, so he worked solely to pay it off without her working at all, contributing one red cent to that mortgage. Uh, he had to refinance uh, it because he did keep it, uh, but he had to pay her out like over six, seven $700,000 for her share in the equity in that house that she didn't contribute to. Um, took uh, his superannuation, so you think he had about a couple of hundred thousand dollars in there. He had to give her a hundred grand out of that and all the cash that he ever owned. Uh, and, and you know what he got? He got a few knickknacks in the house that he kept. Fuck all. So he got absolutely graped. Um, and guys wonder why after me saying, this is just one example of it. Me saying this happened firsthand to another guy who didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve this lifestyle. Why I am so open with my critical thinking about marriage. Let's just put it in those terms. I know it can work for some people, but there are a lot of guys out there who believe in that fantasy that the earlier story I was talking about, that you're getting all the great sex and you're going to hold hands, dying in the bed together, and uh, you're going to work through problems together. Yeah, that exists. But I'm going to say nine out of ten times, either it's the man's fault or the woman's fault, whoever's fault it is. Marriage is not a great deal for anybody, but especially the man who cops it on the way out. For example, last night she was at her fucking PTA meeting, which ran from 7 till 11. I went to bed, and had just turned out the light when she shows up at the front door and starts ringing the fucking doorbell. She didn't have her keys. She then informed me that she never does. I pointed out that having keys to your own house might be a smart thing to do. And yeah. she acts like that's some kind of major insult, and then launches into a description of what happened at this meeting. I stopped her and said something like, you know, I was in bed and almost asleep and you got me up. It didn't even occur to her that A, I would actually mind being jerked out of bed by the doorbell, and B, I wasn't interested in a blow-by-blow -blow at that moment. Finally, after years of this, the truth is starting to sink in, and I'm devolving into this serious, angry person to be around. All the normal, considerate stuff I used to do, I don't. I don't talk to her unless I have to, and not any longer than necessary. She catches me looking at her sometimes, and the expression she sees on my face frightens her, I think. Somewhere along in there, she's going to ask me if something's wrong, and I'm going to start screaming at her. I've tried marriage counselling, I've tried listening, and giving and being nice. Now I'm going to try fear and intimidation. Ooh, you can that's, a, that's a bit of a rain, that's a bit of a slippery slope, dude. I mean, why try that? Just just get out. You're going to end up um, catching a case, so to speak. Read that as funny or slightly troubling, but it's a man at his wit's end. Of course, this kind of open expression that activists say they... I, I find that troubling. Um, I don't think there's any reason for it. Um, uh, and I know there are other guys out there who will say, oh, it's okay for men to smack a woman around or whatever. No, I, I'll never sign up to that. Just fucking disengage, jump on, dump them on their ass. If you're married, pay the fucking extra cost, get the fuck out, enjoy the rest of your life. They want men to engage and is not what they mean. This would be quickly categorised as promoting violence against women or some other such nonsense. I read it as meaning the guy wouldn't beat the shit out of his wife. This is just frustration with presumably her and himself for allowing it to happen. Although he might want to rethink the fear and intimidation angle. That can't end well. Getting married was the worst decision I have ever made in my life. Of course I married an American Jap wannabe, thinking that the woman she presented before marriage was the woman she would be right after I do. I'm just going to stop this here because it's a bit of a longer story, but how much of a common theme is this? The guy's just getting bait and switched um, en masse. 
the, the, these stories, so to give you a bit of context, because um, this is part three of the video series he made, and this is my third video covering his series, is these are 20 years old now, um, these stories. These were, he scraped them off an internet forum that no longer exists. So this is the shit the guys have been talking about um, for a very long time. And once the internet sort of became more mainstream, he said it was from the early 2000s, um, this stuff is being being scribed and being shared by men. So this is this is nothing new. This is this is what happens to many hundreds of thousands and millions of men, myself included, Larry included. I'm sure you guys at home included who have been through it. You didn't get what you were signing up to. We don't know. We didn't know that then. But there's the internet. There's no excuse not to know it now if you've done your homework. That's why I exist, guys. I try to bring this information to men so at least they know. Especially you young guys out there. You don't think it's going to happen to you. I'm some cranky old guy who got divorced and hates women. I love women, guys. That's why I have a channel talking about them. I just love calling them out on their shit. And also, I love telling the guys the truth about what women get up to. I have a very unique perspective that many men don't. Um, and I want to share that with you from a place where I'm actually experienced enough to have, I think, a view that holds a little bit of weight. I've been a womanizer. Um, I've been married, I've been in long-term relationships, I've seen it all, all right? So let's just keep going with this, but the point I was saying is, th this is not just me cherry-picking one story or one stupid TikTok. This is stuff that has been scribed on the internet over 20 years ago. Stuff that is still talked about on many different channels across YouTube today. New guys finding this out the hard way every single day. Uh, guys getting divorced and their lives destroyed every single day. You guys finding this content, you might be a guy who's come across it, you weren't looking for it, uh, you see it, you think I'm crazy, you think I'm a cuckoo, you think I'm a nutter, I'm sitting here saying all these things. But maybe one day the other foot will come down on you. And um, hey, you're welcome to join the channel then. I have no idea what an American Jap wannabe is. Chronology, we agreed on love, respect, honesty, money and career. Two, we get married, all bets are off. Three, she quits job, refuses to work for duration, lets her credit go to hell, leans on me to pay for her mortgage, credit cards, miscellaneous bills, car payment. Meanwhile, I pay for her house, all associated bills, medical insurance, utilities, and incidentals. Side note, her credit was so shot, of course she never revealed this until after the deal was set, that I carried the loan in my name only for the new house we were to purchase together. Four, I cut her off by refusing to pay for her bills, as listed above. After six months, she becomes indignant. She becomes further in debt and creditors start their agenda. Oh well. Five, she starts emailing and calling all of her old boyfriends while I'm away slaving at the workplace. Six, I give her an ultimatum to cut the shenanigans out. She denies, denies, denies. I call her bluff. Seven, move her out to West Coast. Eight, plan on buying her out of the equity accrued, even though she has not paid one single dime into any type of investment, including the house mortgage. Well, that's just too bad, buddy. You're going to have to do that anyway. You're not doing that out of your own um, goodwill. Uh, you're going to go through the divorce process. Um, you might as well try your luck and try and get a better deal of maybe 50% instead of 65 or 70. People think it's you get 50. Oh, I just give her half. If you give away half, that is, that is a good result. That is a good result. Uh, especially if you have kids, ah, take that deal. But what does this tell you not to get involved? I always talk about this. You need to do your financial due diligence on women. A lot of guys don't. A lot of guys put their head in the sand. They find this stuff out on the back end. Um, they find out that their girlfriend has credit card debt, car loans, all that sort of stuff. Guess who's going to have to pay those when you move in um, and or, or, and want to be financially secure if you decide you want to marry her. You're going to try and wipe them, right? Do the good thing, wipe the debt so she can start on the clean slate. Guess what? She has an expectation now that you're going to cover all her credit card bills and stuff like that when she hits the fan. Like a big kid not understanding where all the money comes from. Um, you, you've got women who can't save money. Right, they don't earn any money. Or have all you know working uh, entry level jobs. Will they have enough money just for their own pocket money? They don't contribute to houses. They don't uh, have anything to show for their years of labour. That's the warning sign. So if you're going out with someone like that, get the fuck them off. Because if things do break up, you're going to be in a world of pain. I, I always say this. I have no issue with men um, being de facto moving in with women, maybe even getting married, if they pick the right. Well, you never know, truly, right? But for me, the job matters, the income matters, the assets behind them matter, because that is what saved 
me a lot of pain only just a few years ago when I went through a really brutal financial separation. Yeah, I paid out, I got hurt, I got raked across the coals. But if she wasn't a similar income earner to me, that at least saved me a little bit. I would have been in a world of hurt. I would have lost everything, right? So that's why I say that to guys. If you're gonna do it, don't just take it on with anyone. Take if you're if you're an accomplished person, try and meet or no, not try. Actually, meet an accomplished person. People say, "Oh, we're dreaming. Women aren't like that. They don't have that." Well, don't do it in that case then, because you're gonna come back here. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know they could take seventy percent of your stuff. Well, I'm telling you now that they can, and that's why you want to be on an equal financial footing with women. And it's not too much harder. If you're a professional um, in in 2024, women are paid just as much as men, if not more, um, and you're gonna be fine. Don't go marrying these people. Go, oh, I don't care about it. You know, guys will marry a chick who works down at McDonald's. They fucking do that. Or marry the girl who works down at Coles and they're a millionaire. That's how you fuck yourself over. I've never bought into that. Bottom line, do not marry an American woman. So, so here's my story. Tough day at work. Arrive home to find wife allegedly had tough day at home with the kids. She says she's tired, and obviously she's in a bad mood. I offered to do the dishes, and she refuses. So, as I do most nights, I put the two youngest to bed, then spend an hour playing chess with the older one before putting her to bed. Right before this, my wife asked me if I was going to do the dishes. I said, sure, and she went out to Blockbuster to get a DVD. At the end of the whole process of putting the kids in bed, I emerge and find my wife finishing the dishes, angry. She begins to ream me out for not doing the dishes, and I say something like, look, I just finished putting the kids to bed. She then goes over and tries to put a DVD in the player. It jams. We've been having trouble with it lately, and she smashes her fist into it, breaking it and the VCR, and begins ranting about how she's sick of living in the house we live in, and so on. Basically, abusive. I respond by saying, literally, go abuse someone else, bitch. She then responds with a string of four-letter words and stomps out. I leave the house and go to the gym. When I return two hours later, she's in bed and asleep, and my pillows are on the living room floor. Sleep out there tonight, buddy. That's fine with me. I was planning to sleep in the living room anyway. We haven't had sex in two months. We have three young children. A divorce would be a disaster. I own my own business, and after three years of ass-busting effort with absolutely no support from her, it's finally taking off. I'm past the point of wondering why this happened to me, but I'm kind of amazed. Someone has to have a shitty marriage. So oh, don't sit there like you're a victim. Yeah, a lot of the times I do do the bait and switch, but there are signs. I don't know, I get a blow, bit of blowback from saying that. I married a woman who... I shouldn't have. And I knew, I knew. I had a gut feeling. I should have done it. I did it because I felt pressure. I didn't want to lose a girl. I was renting with her and was on, you know, all the bills and all that bullshit that's hard. You've got to move out. You've got to deal with drama. You just say, oh, I'll just marry her. Everything will be better if I do that. She'll become uh, maybe the girl that I truly want. They get worse. I knew it. I accepted it when I when I copped it. Hey, fine. I was like, fuck, this is my, my own... This is my own payback for not having a set of fucking balls and, and not buddy going through with a wedding that I shouldn't have um, gone through and proposed to this woman in the first place. Someone has to marry the bitch. Someone has to be trapped. Look, it's me. I mean, I'm a grown man and I have someone in my house who repeatedly has these psychodramas and now it's part of my life too. It's a weird situation. On the one hand, you don't want to be a beta and put up with this shit. On the other, you also don't want three little kids to grow up in an atmosphere of constant warfare, fighting and so on. And she's almost completely incapable of rationally discussing an issue and working together to arrive at some kind of workable solution. It's all demands, irrational rage and pouting. If there were no children, I'd simply leave. But I can't. So you begin to develop this really bizarre relationship where you emotionally isolate her, acting sort of semi-normal, but not letting her know anything about what you really feel or want because she'll use it against you. I lie constantly. You know, as I type this, about 15 feet away as a DVD player with the spindle, or whatever you call it, open and the shelf sticking out, jammed, broken and useless. The VCR slot where the tape goes is... Look, this one goes for a little bit, another minute or so. Like, I'm just going to leave it here. You can see, um, you can read the story on the screen, guys. But more or less, this guy is living um, in a prison of his own creation. I talk about that and various other videos that I've done as men. We always need to make some, take some accountability. And other guys like to come into these sort of spaces and um, feel victimized. I think it's okay to feel victimized, but it's also good to reflect and understand maybe what part you had in it as well. It's, it, even if it's sort of a direct um, influencing part or behavior, but actually 
not acting on red flags because they are they are there. It's like my mate Larry, right? I talk about Larry all the time. Why? Because there were so many red flags. I, I remember 20 years ago when he was just dating his uh, his now future ex-wife, the one that just fucked his life up. He, he's never going to recover from this, guys. He was telling me the whole way through all this stuff. He's not going to marry her. He's not going to propose to her. It's not serious. She's not his type of girl. She's this and that and blah, blah, blah. What does he do? He proposes. What does he do? He buys a house. What does he do? He gets married. What does he do? He has kids. He says he's not going to do all those things, but then he goes and does them because she drags him along and he doesn't know how to say no. And then his life blows up like you expect it to do. It's like a ticking time bomb, a piece of dynamite that blows up. Eventually, after time, he put his head in the sand for all those years. And then once that dynamite blew up, it blew up his whole um, reality. The reality that he thought falsely that he had, but he had been actually living a lie for 20 years because he knew what he was getting. He was telling me at the start, but he still did it, right? I don't know. Guys, tell me what your views are on that. I do understand that women can be uh, tricky, they can manipulate and all of that. But come on, let, let's honestly have some accountability in terms of where we end up in life. There were signs. All right? In most cases, there were signs, unless they were the perfect liar. Guys, the girl I married, she was a shot. When we were living together, I should have moved out. I should have even put up with her. When we were going through the uh, wedding planning phase, she was horrible to me. She was horrible to the people that were... Um, being paid by us to help, you know, like photographers and shit like that. Um, it was just a shit experience, but I still did it because I'm an idiot, because I was weak, because I didn't want to go through and face the music of my bad decision. And guess what? It caught up with me two years later anyway, guys. So live and learn, but a little bit of accountability. I know that some people don't like me saying that, but I think it's just a, it's a hard truth. As men, we got to learn. And if you, if, you know, if you do in the future um, continue to go and date women and meet someone nice in the future, especially after you've had a bad divorce, just uh, have your mind open about what you might have done uh, in the past and things that have happened. And if you see that woman doing those same things that you learnt from that your ex-wife used to do, fuck her off quick because what guys do, like my mate Larry, who gets fucking destroyed in the dating scene as well. I've talked about him in other videos. He is a case study for what not to do and not how to interact with women. But a man who never learns. He's been through some pretty bad times. He doesn't learn. What does he do? He looks at every single woman and compares them against the worst of the worst of his ex-wife right at the end. He doesn't think about how he felt about this woman probably the same way as he thought about his ex-wife at the very start. You need to compare the two there. That's how guys get sucked back in. You're living a shit life. You're living this uh, marriage like this guy on the screen here where you're... you're um, you're fucking walking on eggshells in your house because you're scared your missus is going to throw fucking plates at your head, you know? You're sitting on the couch, you're eating uh, chips or something, and they're looking at you like they want to fucking stab you in the neck, right? I've had that. You're eating chips and they, they fucking tell you to shut up and fuck off because you're annoying them because you're making little crunching sounds, you know? So I won't, go, I won't keep going on with the rant, guys, but that's all I've got to say about marriage. It's a raw deal for 9 out of 10. Guys, would I say not to do it? I'd say, guys, please... Uh, look up the literature out there. Uh, listen to the guys out there like myself who are telling you things. Make your own decisions. You're not going to listen to me anyway. If I said don't do it, you're like, yeah, whatever. What happened to me? You fucking you miserable old bastard. Anyway, guys, this miserable old bastard um, over and out today. If you've made it this far, you've enjoyed the video um, and you appreciate my candid uh, messaging, thank you very much for um, staying to the end. See you in the next one.